Mmm. Time for another video. Yeah. Got that new lip on there, too. That new MMD V2. And then I put a custom fiberglass extension onto it, you know, curb check. Because it's got some curb rash already, but better than beating up that spoiler. And we added the Le Mans yellow headlight film. That stuff works great. But today, I think the video we're going to talk about is the Gen 2 Coyote. Gen 1 versus Gen 2. What the difference is. Because I have a Gen 2 Illuminator. Let's go. What is going on? So, it's been a minute, three weeks, whatever. So, I figured I'd make another video now that I have some time here one evening. Um, so, we're going to talk about Gen 1 versus Gen 2 Coyotes. What's the difference? Because, um, obviously, the Gen 1 is technically no longer produced um, through Ford Performance for the Illuminator. Because um, the 15 to 17 is out, so they got the Gen 2. But pretty soon, there'll probably be a Gen 3 Illuminator as well. Uh, but I have a Gen 2. Um, so I want to talk about the differences and then what I had to do to make this engine work in an 11 to 14. Um, so right off the rip, the Gen 2 is it's the same motor, but it's a different motor. Um, the stroke, the bore, everything's the same. Uh, the Gen 2 had different cams, mid-phaser lockouts, um, different intakes, intake manifold on it. Um, the oiling system was different. Um, the heads were different, the valves, springs, all of that was different. Um, even the internals were a little bit different on the Gen 2. Um, the Gen 2 took a lot of things from the Boss motor, is what Ford did. So they took a lot of the stuff they learned from the Boss motor and integrated that into the um, 15 to 17 Gen 2 Coyote blocks. Um, been a long day, I'm tired. So, some of the Gen 2 improvements that... Um, have been done are the uh, larger intake valves, larger exhaust valves, um, revised intake camshafts, revised exhaust camshafts, which is where I got into the um, the mid phaser lockouts. But um, it came with stiffer valve springs too to ensure you know the valves close properly at high RPM. So pretty much what they did is the Gen 2 has um, Boss cast heads so it's a boss style head but instead of a ported and polished actual boss head it's just a cast version of it and literally it flows the same literally they, they literally tested it they literally just about flow the same um it's got the boss size intake and exhaust valves but they're not the sodium filled valves they're just regular valves the same size as the boss ones um, the cams were a little bit different, but we're not going to get into those because that's not has nothing to do with this setup. But there, that's one of the reasons why that motor wouldn't work in an 11 to 14 is due to the timing and the cams. They wouldn't work with the 11 to 14 computer, um, so you have to change all of that out. Um, so the stiffer springs are basically boss springs are what's in these heads. Um, so I didn't really have to change them at all. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, like I said, the ports have been straightened on the heads. Um, less restrictive, more basically it's a boss cast. Um, they use the uh, boss connecting rods in this motor. They use like stock GT pistons, boss cast rods, and then the GT crank. Um, and that's what gave the Gen 2 that 800 horsepower holding capacity um, was the rods. Because the stock GT could only handle six. With these internals, the boss could always handle eight, so can the Gen 2. Um, but I have forged internals, so it has nothing to do with the boss. Um, that's the illuminator. Um, but I just want to, like I said, I'm talking about the difference between the two. Um, so the cranks were rebalanced. Um, forged cranks, obviously, to support the higher RPMs. Um, the intake manifold had charge motion plates, which by now, most of you have probably read up on the charge motion plates. Pretty much it was... Ford's had that since mid-90s, um, even earlier. I remember they had them, basically they had plates like that on the uh, SVT Contours. Um, where you could change from long runner, short runner, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, 
So, um, it had, like I said, it had mid-lock phasers and stuff, which that was because they changed the camshafts and stuff like that. Um, so what we're going to get into is, what they also changed was the oiling system on this, on this engine. So the Gen 2, like I have, um, so I have the Boss. 302 cast heads, 15 to 17, they flow just as good as the 2012, 2013 Boss CNC ported heads. Um, Gen 2 heads can be used on a Gen 1 block as long as the Gen 2 head gasket is used. And there's a reason for that. There's a provision for the oiling and stuff like that that has to, to work with the head, so you have to use the proper head gasket. But you can use them on a Gen 1 block. Um, so sometimes it could be cheaper to get those, get a set of Gen 2 GT heads, then go out and try to buy a set of boss heads when they flow just the same. Unless you really want those sodium filled valves and, you know, the port and polish. Um, and to make this Gen 2 motor work in a Gen 1, you have to use um, Gen 1 camshafts and Gen 1 timing set. Crank gear, sprockets, cam phasers, all of that has to be from a Gen 1. So you can use a Gen 1 timing set on a Gen 2 motor. Um, Ford designed it that way. Um, they really didn't change anything in the design process, so it's easily, through per Ford specs, Ford performance, you can use the Gen 2 motor and Gen 1. All you have to do is change the cams, the phasers, the timing set, and the crank sprocket. And just put an 11 to 14 timing set in it, and you're good to go. Um, pretty much the um, Gen 2 cams have like boss lift, 13 millimeter lift, versus the 12 millimeter that the Gen 1 had. But like I said, the Gen 2 cams will not work with a Gen 1 computer. Um, and Gen 2 cams must be used with the Gen 2 drivetrain and phasers. You can't use Gen 1 cams in a Gen 2 motor. Um, so let's see here. What else? The valve springs um, are the same valve springs that came in the 2012-2013 Boss 302 engine. Um, so... If you want to get springs, you get the Boss 302R valve spring kit from Ford Performance, and um, you'll be good on that. Um, the thing with the, with the oiling system is Gen 2 deleted the piston, the oil piston squirters, so they're blocked off. Um, especially in the illuminator, they're blocked off. Um, but they had a revision in the on the Gen 2 block for the oiling system. All right, so um, a Gen 2 block can be used in a Gen 1. But you have as long as you have to use the proper Gen 2 components for the oil filter adapter. It has a different adapter. Um, they have an added return that requires a matching Gen 2 OFA, oil filter adapter. So it has a return passage that diverts oil from the oil filter adapter. So if you have an overpressure, instead of building up, it dumps the unused oil back into the pan pretty much. Back into the engine into the pan. Um... And the Gen 2 block uses 11 millimeter head studs also. Um, so, <clears throat> also the reason you have to use the Gen 2 <coughs> head gasket with Gen 2 heads on a Gen 1 is the oil passage at the front of the head gasket on the driver side um, of the heads and passengers. They're bigger. The main port that feeds the heads is a bigger port. So on the Gen 2... The reason I like going with that is got to, it's, they, they fix part of their oiling issue with getting oil up to the cams. Um, so you got a higher pressure, more flow going to the top end of the motor on the Gen 2 motors. Um, so compression, um, compression stayed the same throughout the years. They didn't change the compression. Um, the power changed um, from Gen 1 to Gen 2 pretty much based off of what the heads and the cam change. Um, same RPM, they were limited to 7,000, they weighed the same, still had the same forged cranks. Um, the Gen 2 had deeper valve reliefs because of the cam timing and stuff on it. Um, and like I said, the intake and exhaust valves were boss style. So pretty much on this Gen 2 um, Illuminator, what you get is, is you get the Gen 2, 50, it's a 15 to 17 production block. It's got the piston oil squirters blocked off. It has the revised head gaskets and block for the oiling system. 
It has a return port on the oil filter adapter housing to return unused oil back into the pan so you don't get an overpressure. Um, it has cast boss heads, which is what's on this illuminator as well, which the illuminator comes with. It's just, it pretty much, the illuminator is a 15 to 17 motor, and the only thing they did different is they put a boss crank, manly rods, melee pistons, boss bearings, billet oil pump, bigger pickup tube, the oil pan, the Cobra Jet tone ring on the back, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty much a 15 to 17 with forged internals is what they did. Um, they're rated for anywhere from 1,000 to 1,200 is what they can handle with the crank. Anything over 1,000, you're starting to push your limits um, with the cylinder walls because they're not, they're, they're, it's not, like this block's not sleeved. It's just right off the shelf from Ford Performance. Um, but there's guys out there running 1,200 at the crank, 1,000 at the wheels with these motors, and they're running them all day. Um, I'm right around 900 at the wheels. I'm cool with that. I'm safe with that. That gives me leeway. You know, I don't want to do an overboost and, uh, you know, fuck up the motor or you run too much pressure for too long and you just put too much stress on the cylinder liners and you end up cracking one of them. Because um, that's the other downfall they didn't fix with the Gen 2 is there's no coolant jacket supports in the Gen 2 motor. Even the illuminator, there's no supports. Unless you buy the Ford Performance Race Prep Block, which that one comes with the supports in it just like the 5.2 Voodoo motor does, um, which is in the GT350. Um, you're good for about a thousand horsepower all day with the illuminators. Now, if you want to go to a sleeve block, you can do that. You'll spend roughly anywhere from twenty eight hundred to thirty five hundred dollars just to sleeve the block. That's not even including the price of the block. That's just to sleeve the block. So you can write around a three thousand dollar option to get it done. Um, but once you get a sleeve block and you get it with the support system, which is the coolant jacket reinforcements that are welded in. Pretty much that block can handle whatever the fuck you want to throw at it. 1300 horsepower, 1500 horsepower, it'll it'll handle it until something breaks. Um, so maybe eventually I'll build a sleeve block for this, but I'm happy with what I got. I can drive it. On nice days, it's not set up for an everyday driver. It's not a daily. You guys have seen videos of this car. Um, some pictures of it here and there with the engine bay. It's, it's not a daily driver. It runs on E85. <clears throat> So, if I had to do an illuminator build, I would go to Gen 2. I um, mean, you could source Gen 1 parts and get them forged, but the Gen 2's got the revised heads. It's got the revised oiling system. Um, it's got good internals in it. So, and then when you get a... Let's see if I still have it here. Um, I might have put it in the basement. When you get... A illuminator. Is this it? Yep. So, when I got the block, I thought it was kind of cool. I will uh, show you here. So, you get this for performance. And it's got the name of the guy or the person who built your actual short block. So, and the reason I say not, I say short block is I didn't buy the long block. The short block was purchased, then the heads were purchased, then the cams were purchased, and everything was purchased separately, and then it was put together. Um, but I think it's pretty cool. I really can't make out his name, but it looks like it's um, Charles, maybe? Charles V. Charles V. Gleste, maybe? Or Les Gleste? So it looks like a, I don't know, it looks like a, a, a U, maybe it's Veloste, Yuleste, I, I don't know. I mean, you can tell they, they hand scribed it into this, but it's not the, it's not the best, but I didn't put it on the motor or the car because I wanted to preserve it. I thought it was really cool that you actually get the person where something happens, you say, hey, where's this guy at? He built my motor and it's fucked up. <laughs> So, but, uh, so far so good. It's been running good. Um, hopefully I can get someone to, I can get some, some past videos done and I can get that up on there. Uh, if you guys want, post comments below. Let me know what you want to, uh, 
want me to talk about next on this build. Um, still many more videos I can make. But uh, I'm just going one by one down the line. If something you want me to talk about or whatever, then post up and uh, I'll make a video. All right, peace. You know what I love? I love being able to drive at night. No radio, nice night, temperature's right, a little hot, 86 degrees. But being able to just listen to the car. Just roll down the freeway and you just I mean there's no better sound, no better feeling. It's you and your car just chilling. Rolling down the freeway. Mm. I usually listen to music, but man, I just tonight I fairly just drive with the windows down and listen to the car just roar down the freeway. Ah no better feeling sometimes. It's peaceful, it's calming, and it's just so relaxing to me sometimes. What do you guys do? You like just listening to your driving down the freeway, windows down, no radio, just chilling, listening to the sounds in your car, bounce, sound bouncing off the walls. Let me know. Hit up in the comments.